Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, yesterday, I did a video, and where I was asking, like, what would you like to see more of, and stuff like that. And, um, I got a comment that said, um, how to clean books, and those are coming, but I am missing one piece to my puzzle, so, um, I have to get that before I could do those videos, so that is coming, um, and what I got a majority of stuff about was, um, writing tips, actually, which, um, really kind of took me by surprise, um, I wasn't really expecting that, so, um, I think this is going to be the first video in a series of videos that are just simple little writing tips. Um, there are some, oh, hi, Fred. What, what, what's shaking over there? Just, just doing a video. We're doing writing tips. Um, there's a couple of caveats here that, um, I think need to be, like, addressed and known. First off, um, the biggest hurdle that you're going to face is just sitting down to write. And any, I, I did a video about this before, any book you pick up, that is writing advice. We'll give you all sorts of information. Some of it would work, some of it won't. Um, some of it works for some people and it doesn't work for others. But at the end of the day, the thing that all of these books say is that you just need to sit down and write. Um, and if it's a thing where, well, I don't think I have the time, and um, the answer is always, we'll make the time or else you don't want to do it. So, um, that is really going to be the rule above all other rules, is just sit down and type. Um, another thing is, when I'm talking, a lot of times I'm going to say type or write. Um, but I will probably more likely say type, because that's... I do more typing than writing with a pen and paper and everything. Um, but I know some of you do longhand writing, and that's fine. I'm not saying, when I say type, I'm not saying you have to be typing. Um, boy, he's kind of a distracting pup, ain't he? You're very distracting, Fred. I don't think he cares. So yeah, so however you type or write or um, dictate or however you do it, um, just know when I say type, I'm not just referring to typing. Just, I mean, write, okay? Um, and... Yeah, that'll be its own thing. Okay, so those are the basic gists here. Um, no matter what happens, you have to just sit down and write. Um, so let's say you have that mindset already. You are like, okay, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to write. Um, and that's not a problem for you. <clears throat> um so we've crossed that hurdle. So now let's talk about something else. And I think it is more prevalent now than ever before. So um, I really want to hit this. Now I know a lot of writers, and with good reason, are always trying to hone their craft by um, picking up craft books or... Um, listening to podcasts or watching videos like this where people are giving them advice and stuff like that. 
So, um, what I want to say about this is, and I know, uh oh, Fred's got an itchy ear. Fred, you are a nightmare right now. Um, artists, writers, um, are typically self conscious, um, a little bit. And, um, I think there's a lot of people in the world who write books, who have YouTube channels, who have podcasts, who kind of prey on the insecurities writers have and will constantly come up with new ways to kind of fuck with people. So like, um, let's say this person is, um, a New York times bestselling author and has written, you know, three or four great books. And now their main focus is, um, teaching how to do this to people. Um, a couple things there. One would be if that person is kind of giving up writing for this, um, they're probably making more money with this than they were with writing. So that's one thing to look out. For. Second thing is, is if they were able to make you like a great writer, you would have no need to come back. If you have no need to come back, there's no need for you to give them any more money or buy any more of their products. So it would be a diminishing returns um, business for them to get into. So that doesn't make any sense either. So I've seen and I've witnessed it like firsthand, like being like a, a student of somebody and um, you go and you do all this stuff and you buy the books and, you know, you do your thing. And then you feel like you've reached the pinnacle of what they can tell you. And then you sit down to write and sometimes it feels like you're exactly in the same spot that you were six months ago when you started doing all this stuff, thinking it would make you, um, this awesome writer. And a lot of that is because salesmen and like salesman psychology is to keep you satisfied, give you what you want, but always hold something back. So you'll always want to come back. And there are some people out there who are very good at this. And even when it seems like there's nothing else to know, there will be something that will pop up and they'll say, Oh, you're not going to be able to do anything unless you, um, do my new webinar about blah, 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 blah. Now I'm not saying all this stuff is bad, but what I want to focus on here is how it makes you feel afterwards. Okay, so like if you um, listen to a podcast or whatever and you're learning um, about passive voice, let's say, and you're like, oh, this is really interesting. This will really up my game if I could figure out a way to make sure my character doesn't have passive voice. And then after that, you sit down to write and you're constantly second guessing everything you do. That's not good. Um, the reason why published authors with publishing houses are able to crank books out is because the book that they send into the editor is probably the equivalent to like um, a stinking pile. And then their editors go through. Um, and do all the grammarific university stuff and take out the passive voice and 
um, make sure tense is all proper, all this other like stuff. So these writers don't ever have to actually worry about that. Their team at the publishing house worries about that. That's why when you hear like someone's like, oh yeah, I just finished my new book. Um, it'll be out next year and it's freaking February. And you're like, why the hell is it going to take that long for this guy's book to come out? Well, it's because that guy writes like a fucking slob and they need like a team of editors to go over it and make it not be a book written by a slob. And then that book comes out once the marketing machine like rolls into place and um what have you and it's all good and fine or whatever <clears throat> so um the reason why these big authors are able to be relevant is because they're constantly writing they don't worry about anything else and i know if you are a self-published author or if you are an author who is like shopping stuff around agents or anything like that you have to wear multiple hats and that's okay everyone at some point has to wear multiple hats but the main focus and this goes way back to the beginning of this video where you have to just sit down and write. You have to sit down and type. You just have to do that. If you listen to a podcast or read a book about writing or any of these things, and then afterward you cannot do the thing you could do before you were listening to that, don't listen to those things anymore. That's not good for you creatively. It might be teaching you a lot of stuff that's good for um, the study of the written word and everything like that. But if it is hindering your creativity, don't do it. Or try to, when you are listening to that stuff or reading that stuff, don't take it personal and just look at it as this is how these things go. Um, but the second it starts to hinder you, and this is coming from straight experience, um, I constantly thought that I needed to up my game um, in a bunch of different levels because I didn't have the education that a lot of other writers have had. So I always thought like I needed to be reading craft books over and over again and listening to successful people's podcasts and all this other stuff. And um, the more I did those things, the less I was writing. And the stuff I was writing wasn't even that good. And I realized that the stuff that I think is kind of my best stuff is when I didn't know what the hell I was doing and I was just telling a story. So... Um, just take care of yourself creatively and mentally and don't let these traps of um, what you should be doing take over your creative voice, if that makes sense. Um, so that will be the first one of these things. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down below. Um, if there are any topics you want me to actually hit, um, you could leave that down below too, and we will talk about that at another time.